how can I say it? Sure, an idea can arise of wanting the next moment to be different. That's fine. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with trying to, to change our experiences and our circumstances to create, to create, endeavor to create moments of our lives that, you know, um, we imagine will be enjoyable, fulfilling, nourishing, and so on. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not suggesting that we stop doing that. That is the, the standard sort of human endeavor, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? So it's fine. But it's also, uh, as much as it's understandable and fine to engage in that way of approaching life, it's also the source of a tremendous amount of unrest for human beings and frustration and suffering, quite frankly, right? A, you can think about this perspective as that I'm talking about of, of, of this way of, of encountering reality of, of um, relaxing the, the habitual tendency we have to imagine that there's something missing and then try to transform it into something better to just see what happens when you relax that and and that can be you know practiced if you will or engaged in as a kind of experiment with your experience um whether things are going relatively you know comfortable and e easeful and or when the shit's hitting the fan when things are difficult um and it's really quite something to to discover it, it's it's kind of like and this opens up so many things, this, this way of approaching our experience. But one of the things it opens up is it, it reveals that the things that we think of as afflictions, as problems that need to be fixed about our experience are not merely that. They're not merely what we imagine them to be. And mm -hmm. um, it's just a powerful sort of way of cutting through that idea and discovering something else about those afflictive states. You know, in the Tibetan tradition, they talk about um, the, I don't know that tradition that well, a little bit about it, but they talk about how the afflictive states that we typically think of, right, as problems, they represent something is wrong, they need to be fixed. So we apply very various curative measures and an antidotes to fix those states, right? Um, whether they're medical or psychological or spiritual antidotes. Um, but that, that tradition, you know, speaks quite beautifully about leaving those uncorrected and discovering that the solution to those so-called afflictions lies in the very afflictive states themselves, which sounds possibly crazy. But what I mean by that is that they're not the problems we imagine them to be. They are the shining mm -hmm. forth of reality itself. And that is largely unknown by human human culture that that notion Mo most human beings have no idea that what i said is possible or or true or or a way to experience the flow of all experience not that just the experiences that we like but the ones that we we say are somehow lacking in well-being so I, I say this sometimes that it's it's about discovering a whole nother order of well-being one that doesn't have an opposite that is the very basic state of every experience, basically, is its sheer existence. That's free of definition, that's free of um, any sort of reifying or rendering of it. It just is, um, I mean, and part of what happens in our struggle to correct our afflictive states is that we're, we're struggling with mirages, basically. It's not to say that they're not there, but in a sense, they're not there because you can't find them. So what we're struggling with is, is in a state of constant slipping away, constant, it's impermanent. Everything is, everything is, in the Tibetan tradition, they also talk about the way in which phenomena self-liberate upon arising. They don't require being fixed because they're freeing themselves in each instant. Like we think about thoughts being difficult. Every, right now, each thought that arises frees itself in its very arising. It's gone, just like that. So what do we need to fix? <laughs> it just liberates itself in each instant, the moment does. And that can be discovered more easily 
by engaging in this simple relaxation of trying to fix the moment. Because trying to fix the moment keeps reinforcing the idea that it's broken, doesn't it? That there's something missing. That's the problem with trying to fix the moment is it keeps reinforcing the idea that it's broken. And, and sure, from one perspective, the moments of our lives, the circumstances of our lives can feel broken and we can take steps to try to fix those, whether it's health problems or mental health issues or relational dynamics that feel like they're out of whack. I mean, there's all sorts of things we can do that is perfectly reasonable to engage in things like that. And at the same time, from this other vantage, there's nothing, there are no, there are no problems whatsoever. There is the radiance, the radiance of life shining as everything. 